So before we delve into the details, let us ask ourselves a very important question. Why is this even important? Why do we need to know the electron transport chain? People who are aspiring to be clinicians may think that why is this even relevant? Well, I am here to tell you that the electron transport chain is very relevant. Well, first of all, electron transport chain is the mechanism by which our body generates energy for various everyday bodily functions. So basically without the electron transport chain, our body won't function. Also, it has various applications in drugs such as aspirin, anti-cancer drugs, various pesticides and carbon monoxide poisoning. Do wait till the end of the video to find out more. So what is the electron transport chain? The electron transport chain is basically a series of enzymatic reactions within the inner membrane of the mitochondria. The electron transport chain is also known as the respiratory chain. 70% of oxygen consumed by the cell is utilized by the electron transport chain to produce ATP. So why do we need the electron transport chain? So the goal of the electron transport chain is to produce energy in the form of ATP. Location of the electron transport chain, that is where does the electron transport chain occur? That is in the inner mitochondrial membrane. To carry out the process of the electron transport, five complexes are involved. Complex 1 is also called as NADH CoQ oxidoreductase or NADH dehydrogenase complex. Complex 2 also called as succinate Q reductase. Complex 3 known as cytochrome reductase. Complex 4 known as cytochrome oxidase. Complex 5 or ATP synthase called F1, F0 ATPase where oxidative phosphorylation takes place. In the electron transport chain, the electrons are transported from NADH to a chain of electron carriers. These electron carriers are flavin mononucleotide or FMN, ubiquinone or coenzyme Q or CoQ, FES protein, cytochromes which are basically heme proteins and copper. These are cytochrome B, C1, C, A and A3. Cytochrome A and A3 constitute what is called cytochrome oxidase. Now cytochrome C is water soluble while the rest of it is lipid soluble. The complexes are arranged according to increasing redox potential. Basically what this means is that complex 1 has a negative redox potential and compared to that complex 3 has a positive redox potential followed by complex 4. Electrons will always travel from a negative redox potential to a positive redox potential. Hence, in the electron transport chain, electrons travel in one direction from complex 1 to complex 4. Before we move on to the actual chain, we need to know that complex 1 receives its electrons from NADH. This NADH is present in the mitochondrial matrix and is supplied from the TCA cycle, beta oxidation of fatty acids or the malate aspartate shuttle system. So now we move on to the electron transport chain. The electron transport begins when NADH donates its electrons to the first complex. In complex 1, we have FMN and FES. These are redox reactions and the Fe exists in the form of Fe2 plus or Fe3 plus depending on whether they donate or receive the electrons. The electrons are then transferred from FMN to FES and then from FES to CoQ. The redox reactions generate energy and this energy is used to pump four protons into the intermembrane space. Next, we'll move on to complex 2. It is also known as succinate dehydrogenase ubiquinone oxidoreductase. Complex 2 contains succinate dehydrogenase which converts succinate to fumarate in the TCA cycle. This produces FADH2 which donates an electron and gets converted to FAD. The electron is accepted by the FES complex which subsequently donates it to CoQ. 
Thus, CoQ receives electrons from both complex 1 and complex 2 and itself gets reduced to QH2. It is important to note that no proton transport takes place across complex 2. Now, complex 3 receives electrons from CoQ. Complex 3 contains cytochrome B, cytochrome C1 and in between them FES prosthetic group. Electrons from CoQ pass to cytochrome B, then to FES and finally to cytochrome C1 as per the redox potential. Here again, the energy generated is used to pump 4 protons into the intermembrane space. From cytochrome C1, the electrons are transported to cytochrome C, which is an intermediate protein used to transfer electrons to complex 4. Now coming to complex 4. It is also called cytochrome oxidase. Complex 4 consists of cytochrome A, cytochrome A3, copper A and copper B and it is called heme A A3 and copper A copper B center. In the fourth complex, the electron is accepted by copper A and then donated to cytochrome A, after which it is transferred to copper B and then to cytochrome A3. At complex 4, oxygen is the final acceptor of electrons of the electron transport chain. It accepts electrons from cytochrome A3 to form a water molecule. These redox reactions cause pumping of two protons across to the intermembrane space. Coming to complex 5 or ATP synthase, it is a protein assembly in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Proton pumping ATP synthase, otherwise called the F1 F0 ATPase, is a multi subunit transmembrane protein. It has two functional units named as F1 and F0. It looks like a lollipop since the membrane embedded F0 component and F1 are connected by a protein stock. All the pumping of hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space creates a higher concentration of protons in the intermembrane space as compared to the lower concentration of ions in the matrix. ATP synthase is present in the inner mitochondrial membrane and it uses this flow of hydrogen ions from higher to lower concentration to generate energy, which converts ADP to ATP. This is oxidative phosphorylation. This is the basic mechanism of energy production in our body. Now coming to the energy calculation. So, if the cycle starts from NADH, then 10 hydrogen ions are involved. If the cycle starts from FADH, then 6 hydrogen ions are involved. For every 4 hydrogen ions, 1 ATP molecule is released. So if the cycle starts from NADH, 4 hydrogen ions will release 1 ATP molecule. 4 hydrogen ions again will release 1 ATP molecule. Here, 2 hydrogen ions will release half ATP molecules. Therefore, a total of 2.5 ATP is released. If the cycle starts from FADH, then again 4 hydrogen ions will release 1 ATP molecule, 2 hydrogen ions will release half ATP molecules and therefore a total of 1.5 ATP is released. Now coming to the inhibitors of electron transport chain. The inhibitors can be remembered by the mnemonic RACON where R stands for rotenone. Now, rotenone inhibits complex 1. A stands for antimycin. Antimycin inhibits complex 3. C stands for cyanide and carbon monoxide, which inhibit complex 4 and cytochrome C. O stands for oligomycin, which inhibits ATP synthase. N stands for the fact that no coupling is facilitated by uncoupling agents which prevent proton transfer across a gradient. Here comes the most important part, the why of studying electron transport chain. Here are a few examples where the electron transport chain is important. Firstly, aspirin, which is a very commonly prescribed painkiller, is an uncoupler. Rotenone is a broadly used pesticide. It is poorly absorbed by skin, 
but purposeful ingestion can be fatal. Doxorubicin is a drug used in cancer chemotherapy. However, doxorubicin can cause cardiomyopathy where coenzyme Q is implicated. Carbon monoxide disrupts the electron transport chain and binds to hemoglobin and forms carboxyhemoglobin. This can be fatal to the cardiac and nervous systems by carbon monoxide poisoning. 